Hi folks, it's Greg Milner at Worldwide Salon Marketing. Um, this is about Facebook advertising. Uh, there's a lot of confusion about it. And uh, so I wanted to introduce uh, Worldwide Salon Marketing's new uh, social media advertising manager, Sam Buckley, um, to take us through uh, how to boost the post more effectively. So welcome to the call, Sam. Thanks, Greg. Nice to be here. Sam, why is there so much confusion about how to use Facebook effectively? I think a part of the big problem is that Facebook changes things all the time. So it's hard to stay on top of what's new, what's changed and how they change things and where things look even. So that makes things difficult for people and it's, quite, it's just quite a big beast in general. You know, there's lots in there to learn. Um, you just got to know which parts to, to use. So some so good Facebook, guidance. It's simple. So even just recently, Facebook has changed its policy on what it shows in people's personal timelines. Can you explain what those changes mean? Sure, Greg. So basically they've changed the algorithm and Mark Zuckerberg has decided that people would like to see personal interaction on their Facebook pages much more than everything that they see from a million businesses. So he has changed the algorithm so people see a lot less of the content you put on your Facebook business page and see a lot more of the things that your friends put up. So how do businesses um, cater for that and still get their, their uh, stuff shown in people's timelines? So there's two parts to the story. Um, what the first part is any content you put on your business page, you really want to make sure that it brings engagement so that you want people interacting with those posts to be seen more. And the other part of the equation is to boost posts. So the algorithm hasn't affected advertising as such. So if there's posts that you put on your business page and you like to get them out there to the people that like your page now and fresh eyes, then you want to boost some posts and use that basic advertising platform for that. Okay, but there's boosting posts and there's boosting posts. So um, can you take us, can you share your screen and take us through the things you need to be aware of when you're boosting a post and pick a post and, and show us how to more effectively boost it so that more, the, more of the right people see it? Sure, I'll just share my screen now. So what I'm going to do is just use, this is just an example of a picture post, so a picture with words and an image, and I'll show you what the best, best practice with an example to do for that. So if you go down and use boost post button down here, now a lot of people will just pop some money onto their ad, onto their post that they want to send off, and just send it out there without any real targeting options and you're really just throwing your money away doing that so I'll, sh I'll give you an example here we'll pretend that this is a image and they've ri we've written a post about a pamper package that we want to give to want mothers to buy so when you're a mum you've got some you've got a few little kids and your life's really busy and you need some time out for yourself on a regular basis just to keep your stress levels down manage things better in your life and just have some downtime so if this was a post like that, this is what we'd look at. Um, this is a recent thing as well. So up here, you can change what kind of results you want from your post. And there's two options here. The first one is engagement. So if you want just people to make comments and things on the post in Facebook. So that would be whether you'd like them to share it or you'd like them to comment on it, um, to like, love, laugh and all those other little emoticon options as well. And the other option is to prioritise it and show it to people who are more likely to send you a message in Messenger in Facebook. So chat messages to you about that particular post. Right. So you choose one of those options. They're the two options, engagement and messages. messages. Yeah. So that's the two there. So you might, you may have, you may want them to call to sell on to get them to book. So if that's the case, you would go for the engagement one. If you're a sort of person who would like to, is actually likes messaging people and has the time for that, then you might choose the messages option. Some people would like to have a chat with people initially before they make 
a decision and so sometimes that messaging option is a good one. Um, there has been some research shown lately that actually proves that people are more likely to engage with businesses who do have that chat option available for people and can talk to someone instantly. So that's just one to think about. So the next part is post button. So this is optional. So that would go down the bottom down here and there's lots of different buttons you can choose. So you would pick one that would match what you want them to do. And you can also choose to have none. All right. So let's say that you, you wanted to um, send people from the, the boosted post to say a page on your website. You'd then put a learn more button in, wouldn't you? Yes, that's right. So if on your landing page you had an opt-in and opted in for a voucher for that, uh, say, a, a three-session pamper pack, then you'd put learn more down and that button would then send them through to the page on your website. Okay, let's, let's, let's go through that exercise. Put a learn more button in and see what happens. Okay. So, so you pop the button in and then it will just ask you for the website address of the page. So in there you would have some extra information after there so whether it be forward slash pamper pack or something like that so you choose, you, yeah, the, you choose the link to the actual page on the website which relates to whatever you're boosting yes that's right okay so you go through that then what so the next part is your audience now this is a really important part this is where you can set your targeting options and really narrow down to the kind of people that you want to have come into your salon or the people that are more likely to buy that product that you're trying to to get out there and advertise so for this example of a pamper package for parents say you were in brisbane you had a salon in brisbane for example you would want to create a new audience so that's down here and we'd click on that and then it asks you for a name. So say your salon services from Brisbane and it goes as far as 40 kilometers outside of the center of Brisbane. So you have 40 days. Um, now you would choose your gender. So if we're looking at mums with kids, we'd pick women. Yeah. Now you can pick your ages. Now say for instance, mums who are 30 plus are more likely to to make sure they take the time to to look after themselves so you would change this then to 30. yep and then the top end of the spectrum say you might say 55. now this is where the location part is where you would put in that brisbane plus 40 kilometers so we would find brisbane first so you type in the name Brisbane and then you need to pick it from their list of cities and that show up that so will pick Brisbane Queensland and then this is the part where you can choose how far so if you see that circle here around Brisbane that shows you the radius where people live that will show the post to so we can pick 40 or we can go all the way up to 80 kilometers from the center of Brisbane so for this example we'll pick 40 And then the other part we want to include is if we're going for parents, you don't want to leave it just as women and the and that age group that we put in. If you you can actually choose the demographics of parents in here. So I'll show you how to do that next. Yep. So here include people who match at least one of the following. So I'm going to hit browse. And then we have some options here. So we're going to look into demographics today for this example and we want parents so we're going to click into there and there are many options in here so for this example though so all different ages are grouped separately for different kinds of targeting but we're going to pick all parents for this example right that's pretty detailed isn't it it is so that narrows the audience down as we go so for example, for right now, this potential audience size, if you look down here, is 150,000 people in that area. So that's a fair number of mums that you can target for your pamper package. For and that's, 100, that's 150,000 female parents aged 30 to 55. That's right. So you can see how that's a lot more targeted than if you just went, I'm going to spend 20 bucks a day on this for a week or even just pick women you know you're gonna you're gonna be targeting a lot of people that aren't in the demographic that you're trying to reach right 
So another example might be um, you might have a wedding package for hair or makeup. So you can actually go in and choose. Um, there are some places where you can choose a demographic around that as well. So there's, there's lots of different things you can choose. If, for instance, there might be certain magazines that your audience tend to read, that, that kind of person. So you can choose that kind of thing as well. There's lots and lots of different targeting options in here. So you just need to basically have a bit of a look and see what things will match what you want to get done. Okay. So there's different things like education, all around the salons, that probably isn't so much. Oops, pop that. Close that one back up. There's income. So say, say you, you've got a higher end package that you want to give and you think people with a higher income are more likely to go for it. You can choose people who have an income of 60 to 80,000. You can choose more than one. So say you wanted to pick all the ones above 60,000 and above. So you could pick those two and that would give you, a, once again, narrow it down to people who earn a higher income. Yep. So there are, there's, it's never ending the types of, let's get rid of those two. So it's just never ending the amount of different things you can target. And each time you pick a different one, it will narrow it down further. So you'd pick one in there. And I'll just show you this one thing here. If you want to narrow it down further again, so say all parents who earn a certain income, we pick this narrow audience down there, so then they must match that this one up here plus this one here. So then you would go in here to choose the the income range. Okay. So then that what that will do that will target all parents, all female parents. We pick female up higher that earn that income and that are between those ages of 30 and 55. So see this has narrowed it right down to 34,000 now. Yep. So you, it says your audience selection is too specific for your ads to be shown. Try making it broader. So you've got to remove a couple of those parameters. Yeah, so if it comes down into this little red area here, you do need to adjust things a little bit. So, and it's just trial and error. So say you might want to add the next income level up as well, because I didn't add that in. So we could try that. We could try going to income and adding these guys as well. So that's the highest one there. Yep. So hit, whoops, I didn't mean to hit save. Um, I'll edit that again. So that has brought it up to 61,000 and it's up in the green. But it's so a very, very narrowly defined 61,000 people. That's right. Yep. Okay, this is good stuff. I'm learning a lot. This is fantastic. That's awesome, Greg. Yeah, so that's how you can really narrow down your audience. So it's really good when you go to boost a post just to have a, a really good think about what, like who you want to see your post, who you want to bring into your salon or spa. Okay, so we've got that far. We've defined the audience. What next? Okay, so you would save that. Now you can choose here to run on Instagram or not. Now a general rule of thumb is you want to make sure that your ad performs well on Facebook so that it's a winner before you put it on Instagram. That's just a, one of the rules that I go by. That way you're not wasting your money and you're getting better value for money as well. So run your ads on Facebook first. If they run well on there, then include Instagram after that. Okay. So the next part is your budget. So you need to choose how long you want your boosted post to go for. So you've got three options here to choose, or you can just pop in a date down here. Okay, so let's say we run it for a week. Yep, so we just click on seven days. That will change the date in that box. And you wanna choose here, this is your total budget. So how much you want to spend for those seven days in total. Now this gives you an idea but if you spend $5 here, for instance, it would reach between 140 and 360 people. But if you spent $20, it would reach between 510 and 1300. So it gives you a bit of an idea and a guide to, to know how many people you're gonna reach with the amount of money you put on it. it is, is 500 to 1300 people enough of a sample audience to give you an idea of 
whether the words and the and the image are effective? Uh, yes. Yeah, that will give you a good idea. See how, you see how your reach goes. See how what your reaction is. See what sort of um, engagement you get with it. That would that twenty dollars would do that for you. Okay. Okay. Let's let's choose twenty dollars and see what happens. And then you just need to make sure you've got your right ad account chosen down here. Um, if you're as a sell and owner, you've probably only got one, but just double check that you've got the right one here. You just pop down the drop box and grab one. Now, what does Facebook Pixel mean? Okay, your Facebook Pixel is a piece of code and that should ideally go on every page of your website. So what that does is it allows you to track people that come from Facebook and it lets you, you can group them into people who go to certain pages on your site and you can use that for further more advanced advertising down the track. So if, if you are boosting a post that takes you to your website, you would want to use your Facebook pixel. If you're only boosting a post on Facebook and you want them to stay on Facebook, you don't need it. Okay, so, um, if you're sending people to your website, you must have a Facebook pixel on that website to uh, track what people do when they get there. Yep, so it will track um, visitors and, and let you know, you can group them up basically. So in a nutshell, you can create custom audiences and group them into people who visited certain pages and then you can send ads to those people that just visited certain pages down the track. But that would be a, another training video for that one, Greg. Yep. Um, yeah, so that's what the Facebook pixel is for. Okay, so we've, we've chosen the audience, we've chosen the budget, uh, we've chosen how long the ad's going to run for. Um, we're spending $2.85 a day, that's in US dollars. Um, what next? So we've made sure we've got the right ad account and then you just click the boost post. Okay. So what and about, done. and then you're done, right? Terrific. Okay. So what do you then do to check whether the ad is uh, effective or not? Okay. So from there. Or is that, or is that a different video? We probably should do a different video on that because there is this can be quite a bit of it's quite in depth to let you know exactly what to look for and and um, see how it's going and explain all of that. That'd probably be good in a separate video. Agree. All right. Just before we cancel out of this screen, can you go to where it says desktop newsfeed, mobile newsfeed, etc., and explain what those those things mean? Sure. So this here is giving you an example of what it looks like if you're on Facebook on your computer or on your laptop. If yep. you click on mobile news feed, yep. it shows you how it will look on when someone's viewing on a mobile. Okay, yeah. Now, th that's pretty important because so many people now are viewing things on their mobile devices now. There's probably more on that than they do on their computers. So so mobile devices is, the, is really the area you should probably be targeting with devices. Yeah, because I think it's about 80 or 85% now that, that's on um, mobile phones, isn't it? Yeah, it's massive, and I know most of the ads that I've run lately, 99% um, of traffic has actually come from the mobile ads. Yep. I see them on the mobile, yeah. And what does it look like on the Instagram feed? Okay, so that... There's Instagram. Right, okay. All right, let's... Uh, so, look, people can go back and, and, and rewind this video and, and look at it a dozen times, so we don't need to cover anything in review. Um, sure. Thanks for that, Sam. Do you want to come out of that um, shared screen? And uh, sure. uh, just a couple of other things. Um, so that's how to set up and boost a post in from your business page. So the next yeah. video, we want to talk about a bit more sophisticated stuff like importing your database of clients into Facebook so that Facebook creates what's called a lookalike audience, which is even more highly targeted is that right um pretty well if there's a few things you can do if you import your database into into facebook so number one you may want to just use that database and you might have a new product you'd like to promote to your current clients so you could create an ad around that and the other option is to create 
as you mentioned, Greg, the lookalike audience. So basically what that does, it helps you to find more people on Facebook that are like the people you already service. So that's how you can grow, easily find people that are more like your customers. Thanks, Sam. Fantastic. Let's do that video as soon as possible. Um, yep. Anybody who uh, has any questions about um, Facebook and, and what Sam's just been talking about, give us a call at the office uh, on uh, our uh, number that I'll put up on the screen. And uh, thank you, Sam. Look forward to uh, doing the next one with you. No worries. Thanks, Greg.